Strategy Corner, a show intended to equip you with the business principles to help you become the leader your organization requires. Our guests from top business schools, renowned consultancy firms and forward-thinking leaders and executives will provide you with the contemporary business insights and principles to help you successfully navigate the complex world of business. And now, here's your host, Lekomet Zabohesi. Hello and welcome to Strategy Corner. I'm your host, Lekomet Zabohesi. During our last episode, we spoke with Buyan Zwan, a part-time lecturer at University of Pretoria's Gordon Institute of Business Science, also a CEO of Breakthrough Development Limited. He shared with us some of the fundamental principles underlying strategy. In this episode, we are again joined by Buyan Zwan to share with us on the subject of strategy execution. Buyane, thank you for joining us again. Thank you very much. In our previous segment, you were very kind enough to lay us a foundation about strategy, the conceptualization of strategy and strategy execution a little bit. Mm. Uh, in this final segment, we'll specifically focus on strategy execution. Strategy execution has always been an evergreen topic. It has been said over 60 to 90 percent of strategy execution and organizational change initiatives fail. Hmm. I want us to focus on the challenges of strategy execution. Perhaps you can give a, l- a little bit of an insight onto some of the challenges when it regarding strategy formulation hmm. and strategy execution. Many organizations actually struggle because they have leadership that have no idea of strategizing. And many a time, therefore, what you end up with is that a very good organization goes down the tubes because it is not able to read the future, read the current circumstances, and rally the troops around what it is that they need to do in order to first survive, next thrive in that in that environment. And if you're not able to be able to help your organization to be able to adapt to the environment that it is in, and then conquer that environment, you do not deserve to be part of the leadership team. And as it turns out to be in many organizations that we actually have good ideas that are turned into strategy, but do not get to be executed. The statistic that you gave between 60 and 90% of strategies do not get to be executed flows from the fact that there are at least four things that do not get to be taken care of. First and foremost, When there is no clear goal in the strategy that people need to be able to rally around, it becomes difficult to be able to execute. Second, when it is not possible to measure the behaviors necessary to execute on the goal, it becomes very difficult to be able to tell whether the goal that has been articulated is going to be achieved. Third, it is when people are not able to keep score. They've got no way of tracking progress being made. If that is not in place, you find a situation where people are playing, but they don't know if they are winning or losing. What becomes critical virtually in every sport is that there is something that defines the scoring of the goal. If it is to be that it is in a tennis match, it is the inability of the opponent to be able to return the the ball that that has come through to their side, and that is the score. And when you're looking into what's happening in rugby, it's got to be somebody who actually goes and has a try. And when there is somebody somebody playing soccer, it's got to be something that goes and hits the net (laughs) on on the inside. So there's got to be a way of keeping score. One of the sports that has really been very clear in terms of what other players can do in order to be able to contribute to the score that is necessary is actually cricket you know for a fact how many wickets are going to need to fall and how many runs are necessary in order to be able to win. So in when you've got a way of keeping score, and it's keeping score not for just the management, but for the people themselves who are going to be able to do what needs to be done, that strategy is going to be executed. The fourth area has to do with the fact that people are not held accountable for delivery or non-delivery. So when you're finding yourself in a situation where some people work hard and they deliver and others are coasting along and they still get to be rewarded the same way as those who are working and delivering, you actually find people being disheartened. And in that process, the strategy execution suffers. 
So on the first point about the clarity of the vision, my understanding is a lot of employees in an organization do not understand the strategy. In fact, someone said if he had to wake one of the employees up at 12 o'clock at midnight and shake them up and ask them, what is the strategy of the company that you work for? Apart from being annoyed, they would have no idea of what uh, the strategy of the organization is. Is that a leadership breakdown of communication between, uh, obviously, the top-level leadership and uh, the employees at the bottom who are actually executing the strategy? It's not the leadership breakdown. The word is translation. It is the translation of the strategy into day-to-day action. When I don't find the connection between the strategy and the work that I do, the strategy is just a, a good list of words. So it is about how you translate the big idea that is about where we are taking the organization to. Because again, you'll recall from our previous uh, podcast conversation that strategy has to do with the translation of the land, the lay of the land, and coming through to lead the people. If you were to be able to take it, take it a little bit further, you would be able to say strategy is about movement from where we are to where we need to be. Strategy in itself is also about, we spoke about differentiation, how it is that what we have is better than what others are presenting. Because if we are able to do that, then we have a competitive advantage. Now, I need to be able to make it easy for the people who are working with me, and keep that in mind. People are working with me, they're not working for me. Those who are working with me need to feel like they have a contribution to make. And the strategy gives them a chance to be able to play their role. If that is not in place, you can wake me up. It doesn't have to be at midnight. You can wake me up at 5 o'clock if I have to be taking a nap and I will come back to you and say, I don't know what we're doing. So uh, the translation that you're talking about means that uh, the employees feel like part of the organization and the strategy execution. That means it answers the WIIFM question. What's in need for me? Correct, correct. Correct. That translation, where, where do we put the responsibility on that translation? Well, essentially, you're leaving that to the person who is at the helm of the organization, the person who's the leader of the organization. They will say, this is what we want to achieve, and that's where we're trying to take, where we're taking the organization to, and why are we doing it? So therefore, when the why is clear, what's in it for me becomes easy. But when the why is not clear, what's in it for me becomes hazy. And what you're really working towards is not just so much WIFFM, but it is how do you get people to own the strategy? And that's a critical thing. And that comes closer to the person that I report into directly. So it doesn't really reside on the CEO. So you have the CEO, you have the executive committee, you've got the people who are part of management, you've got the people who are in terms of first line management, and then you've got an ordinary operator on the ground. There has to be a line that runs through from the CEO all the way to me, who is there as a janitor operating the lifts in the organization. It's been said that stru- uh, culture eats strategy for lunch. Peter Drucker said that, yeah. Peter Drucker, yeah. Mm. What is the role of organizational culture as it relates to strategy execution? Culture is formulated by what we accept, what we tolerate, what we condone. So if the leadership has condoned mediocrity, you will find a situation where great things fall flat. But when you've got an environment where everybody is striving for excellence and you've created that culture of excellence and high performance, you will find that an ordinary strategy becomes an extraordinary execution piece and reference point, as it were. Culture will eat strategy for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner and for snacks, right? And why is that? Because if it is to be that we are in an environment, again, where we tolerate things that we should not be tolerating, we will find that a brilliant idea falls flat. But when we have an environment where we are all rallying together for the success of the organization, we may have a very basic, basic strategy and we go further. Let's look at that in our own country. In the financial services sector, There is an organization that has been around for just 10 years, but it has been able to do in that period, it has overtaken banks that had been there for years. How did they do it? Because they created a culture of, we care about the person in front of me. 
and we care about the person regardless of how well healed they may be. In fact, we care about those who are at the bottom of the pyramid. And that organization right now has the share price that is seven times the banks that have been in existence for a long time. Seven times. How is that? Because they've created a culture of we care and that is what is turning, turning them around. When there was an opportunity to be able to say, we want to be able to do banking and extend the banking hours right to after people have been watching their soccer. Okay, right? Because everything was kind of like the banks are open until 11 o'clock on a Saturday. And these people came through and they said, we will open our bank until 4 o'clock. And when they did that, they turned things around and therefore those who were consumers who were at the bottom of the pyramid started tracking in. And they came in and the culture that was created in there was one of we care about when you want to be doing your banking and we're not bank we're banking around you not you you're not you working around us you also mentioned uh, something about uh, compensation when it comes to strategy execution mm. where some employees would be compensated uh, for execution, but the same uh, kind of compensation also goes for people who are not executing the strategy. Sure. How are incentives, incentive plans supposed to be structured when it comes to execution? Maybe it's important for you to be able to ask the question, what is an incentive? You put it all together in order to be able to get people to do things that they would otherwise not do, and the incentive gives them the additional boost. So, when you're putting together incentives, you're wanting to be able to get those who have the potential of executing much better and much more to be able to feel like there is more to be able to, to be gained out of doing it. So it takes us back to WIFM. So if there is something more that I will gain out of doing more, then I will do more. And also, you will find that organizations will institute what is called short-term incentives and long-term incentives. Now, if your strategy is a long-term strategy, you want to be able to make sure that you've got people that are going to go with you to up until the realization of that strategy. And therefore, you will put in place an incentive for them to stay with you right to the end. But there may be instances where you wanting to be able to have something that is done and turning very quickly. And therefore, you'll have a short-term incentive, which is usually done with the people in the sales environment. What you're looking for in that space is to be able to make sure that people who are doing receive. And those who are not doing actually get sanctioned. And that is what is going to be able to turn the organization around and you will get the culture of positive execution. There was an article that was published in uh, Organizational Theory uh, so many years ago. The title was On the Follow of Hoping for B but Rewarding A. Uh, seems to have captured a lot of organization in terms of organization are hoping for people to execute their strategy, mm -hmm. but they are rewarding them on short-term financial benefits. How do you feel about that? It's one of those interesting situations where we say leaders are dealers in hope. And yet, hope is not a strategy. So if you're going to be able to reward and you're rewarding on hope, you actually don't have anything tangible that people can build on. Chances are you're not going to be able to get that realized. Rewards come into play because they are actually acknowledging that there has been delivery. You do not reward when there has been no delivery. When you reward non-delivery, you chip in that which you are presenting as a, an award. And therefore, it becomes critical to be able to think about why on earth am I going to be able to let this person have this particular incentive given to them, this particular award given to them, until, unless they have actually executed. So let's take ourselves back. We acknowledge that somewhere between 60 and 90 percent of strategies do not get to be executed. But we also have a, a situation where we've got people that are executing the wrong things right. And you need to be able to, as a leader, ask yourself, are we getting people to be able to execute the things they should be executing? Are we getting people to be able to execute things that they should have been executing, but they don't have the right tools to be able to do it? And therefore, we need to equip them. Those are critical things for you to think about at a point of execution. Uh, as a part of my closing question, 
uh, the, the 60 to 90 percent of failure rates in strategy execution and you mentioned about four things that could be attributed to this failure mm. uh, the great scholar edward damien once said if you cannot describe what you are doing as a process you don't know what you're doing mm. is there perhaps a guiding principle or framework or thought when it comes to execution that an organization or leadership can follow Acknowledge for a fact that strategy without execution is wasted. Acknowledge that every strategy needs to be able to produce results. When you're a leader, you're going to be measured on how you have executed and what results you have produced. As far as processes go, there are basically at least about six things, seven things, sorry, that you need to be able to have in place. And that's part of the process. First and foremost, you've got to have clarity as to what needs to be executed. Second, you've got to have commitment to it, which means committing resources, committing time, committing people. Third, and we've spoken about this earlier, it's got to be about translation. Translation of the goal, translation of the strategy to what it is that I do daily. Fourth, it's equipping. Leaders equip, leaders enable. Strategy is not going to happen without people being enabled. Otherwise, it gets to be something that hamstrings them. And that's not what you're looking for. Fifth, you've got to make sure that there is collaboration. Strategies are not executed by single people. Even the Lone Ranger was not alone in executing that trip. He had someone else helping him. And that dog played a big part. Okay? So there is collaboration that is involved. At number six, it's clarifying who is accountable for what. You lose sight of that, your strategy is going to fall flat. And finally, there's got to be consequences. If there are no consequences, rest assured that you will turn those who have been excited about executing excellently to become mediocre or they adopt, why bother? Boyani, thank you so much for coming through to the program. There's a lot of talk, obviously, when it comes to execution that we haven't even touched upon. And uh, in the future segment that you will be invited to the show, we will be discussing in more depth about some of the things that uh, relate to execution, sure. like capabilities and resource-based view of the firm. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much uh, for giving us this talk. Uh, any parting thoughts to our listeners as regarding strategy execution? If you aspire to be a strategist, make it a point that you are not comfortable with the current. Always be uncomfortable with the status quo. If you're going to be the one who's going to be helping with execution, equip yourself with the differentiation of excellence versus ordinary and versus mediocre. If you've got those working together, you're most likely to be the sought after person for strategy definition, strategy formulation, and strategy execution. Excellent note to end. Fiyana, thank you so much once again. Now, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, uh, want to tap into your thinking, your methodologies, how do they get hold of you? It would be an absolute pleasure for me to be able to engage with them and they can do that as, go, as they go through to my website which is www.breakthroughdevelopment.co.za They can connect with the office via solutions at breakthroughdevelopment.co.za We can also be reached via social media which is at Buyani Zwane, and that's on Twitter, that's uh, on Instagram and the same goes in terms of Facebook so you utilize the same Buyani Zwane is one is one is one word and you can also call our office johannesburg 771-4231 and on mobile 082-456-3122 Buyane, thank you so much that was Buyane Zwane, a part-time lecturer at university of pretoria's gordon institute of business science also a ceo of breakthrough development limited he shared with us some of the fundamental principles underlying strategy execution If you have any suggestions about the show or want to recommend any future topics and guests, please email me at lekometa at strategycorner.co.za. Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and found the material to be of great value to you. If you'd like to get more information about Strategy Corner and the services we offer, please email info at strategycorner.co.za lekometa at strategycorner.co.za 
You can also follow us using the handle at Strategy Corner on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to get the latest on Strategy Corner. Till next time, goodbye.